What's up guys, KS here. Thanks for joining me today as always. So uh, periodically I come back and, and circle back around to guns that I've uh, previously featured on the channel. And I've done that with the uh, the CZ P10C and the six hour P365. But it occurred to me, I haven't talked about the shield in a while. And a lot of you guys know, this is one of my favorite carry weapons. In fact, it's my primary carry weapon. And it's also been a little bit of a test bed for certain products. So I wanna just update you guys on where I am with this. Uh, and uh, so I'm getting close to the thousand uh, round mark with this. I'm not quite there yet. I'm really closer to 900 perhaps, but uh, but it has been an incredible shooter, uh, uh, totally flawless. Uh, I have yet to have a single bobble or air with this, which is fantastic because admittedly, I did have a Shield 1.0, this might've been two or three years ago, that I did have a couple of bobbles with. Um, I, I had the occasional uh, failure to feed for whatever reason. Uh, could be ammo, who knows, but, uh, uh, but this one has been absolutely solid. It's been a great performer. And um, and so it's uh, been pretty much, again, my primary carry. Now, I also do carry the 2.0 Compact from time to time. Love that gun as well. And then I've got another gun that uh, that I'm going to be testing on the channel here that uh, may become a primary carry. But uh, for the time being, the shield really is it. And I couple it with a Harry's holster. Uh, this is in the uh, the orange uh, cryptic. And you guys know, I just, I love Harry's holsters. Uh, the fit and finish is fantastic. Of course, this isn't really a review on the holster, but a lot of people ask that question. What are you carrying your gun in? It's Harry's holster. He's my go-to holster guy for inside the waistband. So I, I definitely recommend checking him out. Um, I've left a link down below, I'm sure somewhere. Now, I've also got a different magazine uh, base plate on here. This is actually from Hive Technologies. Uh, I've been doing a little bit of work with those guys and have a couple of different samples there. Now, admittedly, this magazine is loaded. It's got some Fort Scott Munitions 80 grain ammo in here. It's my carry ammo and my home defense ammo. Uh, I've got another review on this uh, coming up. They've got a new bullet out, the 115 grain bullet. So I want to bring that to you, uh, to your attention here pretty soon. But uh, now it's not loaded, of course. Uh, but uh, but again, this is all about the shield right now. But, uh, but I said it was a bit of a test bed for certain things. Now, one thing I did do, even though in the original video, although it's not there anymore, YouTube decided to take that down for whatever reason. Uh, it's all good, uh, no big deal. But uh, but in the original video, I said that the hinged trigger on the Shield 2.0 was actually quite impressive. By far the best MMP trigger I had felt uh, on any MMP that I've owned or uh, just tried out at the range or whatever um, at the uh, local gun shops, that sort of thing. And uh, even though it was a great trigger, it, it, the triggers can always be better. And you guys know I've got a, a long-standing love affair with Apex triggers. So of course I do have an Apex trigger in here. It's the full kit. Um, and I, I'll tell you what, I absolutely love this thing. Um, it really does, it takes that already decent trigger just to the next level. So we've got our wall and our break and then our reset and it does exactly what I want it to do. It's light, it's crisp, it's predictable. Um, so it's great. It's not a review on the trigger of course, but, uh, but again, people always tend to ask. And then the other thing that I did with this, I did swap out the sights. Now, out of the box, you get some steel white dot sights, which is actually pretty good, especially for a gun that's not entirely too expensive. Oftentimes, you can find even the 2.0 for under $400 or right around the $400 mark. But I did go ahead and go with some Ameriglow Pro Dot sights. That video is still out on the channel somewhere if you're curious uh, more specifics on that. But I like these sights. They're easy to pick up. They're fast to acquire because they, uh, they have the blacked out riggers with just the one tritium down at the bottom. So it's kind of a straight eight design, and um, and I have thoroughly enjoyed them. They've been they've been fantastic, uh, and uh, it's made the shooting experience coupled with this trigger just really fun. Now the question that people oftentimes ask, especially somebody who's carrying an, an M&P 2.0 of any sort is, how does this grip texture do? I mean, this grip texture is certainly a lot more aggressive than it used to be on the 1.0, whether it's the shield or its bigger siblings. And I will say that's absolutely true. It is definitely more aggressive. You can definitely feel it. And admittedly, I've kind of gone back and forth with this a little bit. I've yet to tear up any clothes or anything like that. My shirts have always been fine. And generally, if I'm carrying this, I just have a t-shirt on over it. Um, so um, nothing is really uh, coming in contact with this so much and rubbing it so much to where it's going to uh, wear a hole or damage or anything like that. But as far as the skin, co uh, skin goes, by and large, I don't feel this. It's not too big of a deal. Now, that's not always true, however. I do find sometimes when I'm sitting in my car and I make some adjustments when I'm sitting in the car, oftentimes we move around or we're trying to grab something or whatever it happens to be, I do feel this texture. And, and basically the cure for that is to 
move again just a little bit, just a little, some little micro movements, and then I find where it's comfortable. I carry this at the three o'clock in case you're wondering, um, and that seems to do pretty well, and it seems to keep the gun far enough away from me, but close enough to my body to where I'm not printing, but I'm also not feeling this uh, this aggressive texture very much. So uh, it seems to be a, pre a pretty good combination there. Now, some people put talon grips and that sort of thing on it, which is fine, and I think that would certainly cure it if you have concerns about this, but uh, guys, really, um, it hasn't been an issue at all. Now, in terms of the finish, and I have holstered this gun hundreds of times. Um, just in, in uh, getting ready for reviews or comparisons, but then also at the range um, or just at home. I mean, sometimes with an empty gun, I'll just, I'll do this uh, sometimes because I want to test the finish and I want to know how it's going to hold up and, and how durable it is. And I have to say, the finish on this still looks pretty darn close to new. It really has held up incredibly uh, well. I've started to notice just a little bit of wear right there um, at the front of the fish scale serrations. But other than that, I I mean, it really is held up and I've got that uh, holster tightened down pretty good. So um, it is certainly retaining quite well. Um, I'm sure you heard the, heard the click on that, uh, but uh, but otherwise, I mean, the finish really has been great. I know some people have said that uh, they know Smith & Wesson's to corrode and rust a little bit more. That may have to do with the area that you're living in. If it's a much more humid or maybe coastal area, I suppose that's probably, uh, it's a possibility. I'm in the Midwest um, and I, I don't seem to have a problem with really any of my guns, but I definitely have not had a problem with this. Uh, uh, this at all. Now, I'm pretty careful about maintaining my firearms and cleaning them, even if it's a carry gun and, and it's either on my side or it's uh, in a case locked up at the end of the night. Um, I still do some routine maintenance on that at least a couple, two, three times a month to make sure that everything's well lubed and in good shape and uh, there aren't any obstructions or anything like that. So um, that's just kind of some of the maintenance that uh, that I typically do. But, uh, but again, overall, I find the shield to be a fantastic compromise between really good ergonomics and shootability. I feel like I can shoot this at the range basically all day and it hardly wears me out at all. There are some guns out there that really by about 250 or 300 rounds, I do not want to shoot them anymore. Uh, Glock 43s tend to come to mind. They're great guns, nothing wrong with them, but I, I sort of get tired of them after a while. I don't find that to be the case with the shield and it's one of the driving factors for me. So great shootability, but then also comfort. Um, and uh, so it's very comfortable because it's, it's it's thin, it's about an inch wide, and it's somewhere, and I don't have the specs in front of me, guys, but I, I think it's somewhere in the 22, 23 ounce range. Correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, but again, I think it's a really great balance between big enough to where it's comfortable and shootable, uh, very shootable, uh, but also comfortable in terms of carry. So uh, so it's a great mixture, a great blend there. Now, um, it's become a little bit of a test bed, like I said, for some of the different things, the Apex trigger and the sights, uh, but then I've also been working with Hive Technologies there. I've got a review on that coming before entirely too long. So they were nice enough to send me some different uh, magazine base plates and, and other toys, that sort of thing. This is unloaded by the way, uh, but, um, uh, but again, just some things to kind of play around with and, and see how things are going. And the shield has been great. Um, it's done very well with the base plates and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, again, more on those thoughts at a later time. But uh, but overall, guys, again, the, the shield just really has impressed me. It's been a fantastic gun. And it's one of the really high recommendations on the channel. If somebody is looking for a concealed carry firearm um, and, and it really does have that blend of shootability and concealability, the Shield's a great way to go. There are other options out there as well, of course. I'm testing a new one coming out on the channel before too long. I don't want to talk about this very much, uh, but there are other options, and some of which have more capacity, some have less, that sort of thing. Uh, but uh, but this is definitely a great option and certainly worthy of uh, your uh, your attention at the gun store, or at least a, a thought or two. So, uh, guys, if you have some experience with the Shield 2.0 or even the 1.0, be sure to sound off down below. Leave some comments. I love talking with you guys and engaging in conversation. So I'm looking forward to that. Otherwise, thanks so much for joining me and I will see you next time.